What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I want to give a shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Goliath Burrito, Forbidden Fan 12, Steven Stanton, Kent 9 Dave 69, Saturn Coon, Fish Cake, Nicholas A. Montgomery, Tat Cap, Johann Stenfeld, Anthony, Russell Kanai Uyker, Luis A. Sandoval, Samaran 1, Shane Lindroth, Firefox 2590, Crispy Bacon, D, Evo, Jasmine Tayer Studley, Scav King, Zombie, Stinging Shadow, Cursing Throne 92, Jacobus 92, Owen, The One Who Crawls, Cesar Valentin, Joshua Susick, Travis Tennant, Malik, JPC2, Jacob W, Alex Cole, Joshua Wire, Malik Black, Kiki, and as always, I want to give a shout out to our executive producers, Bevan Brummett and Vincenzo. Thank you all very much for your support. If you want to become a YouTube member, click the join button, which is down by the subscribe button down below. And if you wish to become a Patreon supporter, click the link in the description to find out more. We'll see you there. You just grabbed an instructional video. Hold it tight. Hey, Chad, look, it's you. Wow. Yeah, some people can get really, really angry. Really fast. <laughs> Twelve seconds later. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh, 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 my God. Help, Chad, help me. Hey, man, have you been on the run and you just really want to play some video games? Always. Yeah. Well, in the times of... Uh, the yo days of yore, you know, before the Nintendo Switch had unified the handheld and console experience the way that yeah. it has. In a great, drastic fashion. Yes. That I didn't tremendous. think I would ever see. But oh, not in my lifetime. I didn't think I would. Happy to see it. Absolutely. Know? But, yeah, video gaming on the go, you know, the days of Game Boy, the days of uh, Sega Game Gear, Atari Lynx, uh, just Game Boy Pocket, dude. Game Boy the Pocket, Game Boy yeah. Pocket was one of my go-tos. The only thing I hated about it was not <laughs> being able to play it in the dark. You remember you had that little... Uh, that no little backlight. Light, the or you, had you the plug little, in, the it drains your battery like your crazy. Battery like unless you that. plug it up, which you could, but not in the car. No. <laughs> but anyway. But, but yeah, the, the whole thing with uh, portable gaming, uh, as it has marched forward... It's gotten better and better in terms of graphic processing. Dude, the PSP was just mind-blowing. I hated those little discs. I hated the the, UMD, the yeah. hardware, you know, the utility of the games and shit. But, like, the functionality of just being able to play games that quality on the go yes. was just mind-bending. Yes. It was amazing. Yeah. And I loved it. Yeah. And... I, a lot of good shit I, on that console. I remember playing uh, Uncharted The Golden Abyss uh, on that, and it was great. One of the best handheld adventure yeah. games I've ever played. The Vita could have been that and more, but was yeah. never given a fair shake. And it was super expensive. And to get any memory for the fucking thing was stupid expensive. And Sony just tried to tax us too hard for it. it, it that's why it didn't work. Again. But anyway. When it comes to consoles, you know, there's jabs <laughs> being thrown back and forth. But when it comes to handhelds, one has really stood out above the rest. Nintendo. Yeah. Nintendo mastered it a lot with like the Game Boy and Game Boy Color, and then the Game Boy Advance, and then they perfected like the old style Game Boy game style thing with the uh, with the Game Boy Advance SP. Yeah. With the backlight, rechargeable battery, the which only... was so sick. Yes. I mean, the only disadvantage is it didn't have a headphone jack. That's, no. That's the only disadvantage. No. But. And that's a big disadvantage. It is. It anyway. is. But all in all, though, the console still, or the uh, the handheld still did great. And then, of course, we had the the DS, the two, or the 3DS. Then the revamp down to the 2DS, and now you have like the the one that has the top thing that looks like a cell phone screen, which yeah. is which okay. But now we're in the age where handheld gaming is basically ubiquitous with console gaming. Getting there, getting to be on even even territory, but I Took mean, when you see people like like PC companies that make high end laptops teasing a stream or a Steam machine, 
you're thinking, oh shit. And I think it's going to happen. I think the the portable console market is going to like kind of fuse with phones and tablets and shit like that. It, like I those think companies that's the are progression. Yeah. Because yeah. cloud gaming uh, cloud gaming is a thing that's becoming a little bit more prevalent on consoles. It's yeah. just like the uh, it's like uh, the new Guardians of the Galaxy game coming out on consoles. It's coming to the Nintendo Switch, but it's going to be a cloud-based game. Mm-hmm. You're going to have initial things on the system to make it run smooth, but it's going to be cloud-based. It's going to be cloud-based, yeah. which is interesting. We'll see how it works. Well, uh, you I played mean, XCloud. You played on the XCloud a little bit. I and think you played- that it's great, depending on your Wi-Fi situation. Yes, and your ability to um, be patient. Yes. Because sometimes it fucks up. And in all honesty, it's... They'll go through the growing pains of it, and I think have within 10 years, they'll have something that's a oh little bit God. more concrete. Oh my God, sooner than that, I think. You think? Oh man, because they wouldn't, they wouldn't have even pushed it as hard as they have if they weren't confident that it was going to be, you know relatively soon that it was going to be a normal like marketable product that's not going to make people mad yeah Fair. yeah but because they have been pushing the shit out of it here recently and i'm hoping that it does eventually come to fruition and that we're able to get that but there was a time where we had to deal with consoles in the handheld form that were not good <clears throat> the lying labels Oh, God. The lying marketing. People are saying No Man's Sky and like Fallout 76. Dude, nothing compares to the lies that we were told on the fucking Sega Genesis and SNES and Game Boy. Yeah. You would see the label for something and look at it and think you were going to actually get a fucking game out of it. And then you put it in your system that you know is capable of playing things like Mario and Mega Man and shit. Yeah. And it's fucking Pong. It's like shitty, barely pixels on a screen. You, you remember around. those... Uh... All in one game, uh, like handhelds back in the day, they were just like, it's like, how many games does your console play? I have like five. This has over 200 on it. And I'm just like, those games are like Snake. Yeah, and not even Pong worth this shit. And tic tac toe and mm-hmm. shit like that. I'm like, those are, those are cool and all. I mean, you know, you could give that to a child and, yep. you know, let your child have fun with that. But when you're, we're talking console gaming, I mean, there's no getting around like what, like what the Nintendo 64 and PlayStation and all of them could do at that time. Yes, but they they often promise the moon and delivered a golf ball. Oy. that's no moon. That's a space, snow moon. That's oh, it's not a space station. Oh, it's a golf ball. Okay, okay. so we've got the uh, Scott the Waz video queued up here. Console gaming on the go. So let's see what old Scotty boy has to say about this. And let's see uh, which ones he brings up and see if we have any nostalgic bites happen in our brains. Here we go. Hey, all. Scott here. Passing a kidney stone. I hate walls. Why do I live here? Have you ever realized there's a reason for these things to exist? That's right, you haven't, because there isn't any. But for some reason, the wall companies have a monopoly on console video games. It's just the reality we live in now, the way God intended. Super Nintendo cartridges must be played indoors. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> God. You know what was the coolest thing ever? <laughs> Playing a game in an environment you couldn't normally play that game in. Emulators. incredible! I'm talking taking games you can only play on the TV from a home console that only worked when plugged into an electrical socket and making them playable on the go. See, I loved my Game Boy Advance, but whenever I'd pick up a game for the handheld that also released for the GameCube, for some reason, I would think, oh my god, it'll be just like playing the GameCube <laughs> game on the go! No. Oh, this is rich. In reality, it was almost Dude, always a completely Mario different. Tennis the on the Game Boy Color was exactly. one of the best games, dude. Yeah, it was a completely different yeah. thing. Yeah, it's an it RPG. Was... It's a sports, like, RPG. Yeah. I remember you playing that on your little Acer laptop yeah. that you had back when you were living in Lee. And I was just yeah. like, I was like, what is that? He's like, Mario, Mario Tennis. I'm like, where's Mario? And I remember you were just like, it's a bit different than like the yeah, 64 dude, version. Yeah, dude, such a good game man yeah if you haven't checked it out do yourself a favor as you see here game boy pocket yep and uh i super had that mario red land. one yeah super mario land on the on that mm-hmm. was a really good representation of mario and it was around the time when super mario brothers 3 came out yeah. so 
Yeah. Couldn't keep up with the homegrown stuff. To be fair, a lot of home console games would eventually make it to handhelds, but they would generally be pretty old by the time they did. But yeah. that didn't stop me from wanting Super Mario Galaxy and Smash Bros. Ball playable on my Nintendo DS. I mean, they put Super Mario 64 on the system to take the game that defined what 3D gaming would be, the game that may quite possibly be the biggest leap forward in gaming history and make it portable, it's still a spectacle to behold. Taking things that always required to be plugged in at all times to be stationary in your home and giving you the option to take them on the go, oh, yeah. that will always be a magical feeling. And while many games that appeared on home consoles eventually made their way to handhelds, no, 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 no. I want to play the Super Nintendo version of this game, not the Game Boy Advance version of the Super Nintendo version. Look at this, it's kinda different. I don't want a portable device capable of playing versions of Super Nintendo games. I want a portable Super Nintendo. The idea of taking a home console and cramming it into something the size of a Game Boy has been around for quite a while. Sure, you could just buy the Game Boy version of that NES game, but wouldn't you rather play the NES game on the go? That was the mentality behind some of the first major home consoles to go, the Turbo Express and Sega Nomad. And with these, we can finally stay outside forever and still play console games. No looking back! The yeah, Turbo right. Express was a portable TurboGrafx-16. Ah, you could play the exact yeah. same game cards, though you couldn't play the games released for the console CD add-on. Now, I don't own a Turbo Express because I spent all my money on not this, but I do have a Sega <laughs> Nomad. Could you tell? Yeah, this is a size of a concerning growth. Oh, it's yep. not the, the size of portable a concerning out there, growth. Considering it was released in That's 1995 funny. and is a full-blown portable Sega Genesis, the batteries, though. I think it's fairly understandable how big it is. Hell, a Sega Genesis cartridge alone is the size of a Game Boy Pocket. Of course, this system's gonna be bulky. So to play this on the go, we're gonna need a battery pack. Oh my yeah. god. Damn it. All right, I'll go inside just this once to try this thing out. After that, never again. I have to plug it into a power outlet, which at that point you may ask, what's the point of playing Genesis games on this when I could just play them on a TV? It doesn't matter, because look, I'm playing Sonic 1, but it stinks now! Playing with the battery pack would require six AA batteries, and they'd be drained oh. in around two to three hours. Yep. That, or there was a rechargeable option, but overall, not the greatest battery life, and installing a battery pack would make this thing nearly impossible to shove into a pocket. Not being able to put a second Nomad in my pocket is my worst nightmare. But in practice, honestly, the Nomad is far better than I ever expected it to be. It plays Sega Genesis games. It is an official Sega Genesis, after all. The screen was always what I heard the most horror stories about how it didn't age that well. And yeah, I think the biggest problem is how blurry it can get, but it's way better than many made it out to be. It's still fairly playable. Now, games like Sonic, it may be a bit fast for, it gets a bit too blurry, but something like Streets of Rage works fairly well. You can adjust the brightness, which helps a ton, and you can even output the Nomad to a TV, as well as connect another controller. This truly is a Sega Genesis on the go. You just can't attach any of the add-ons, I didn't like even Sega know it CD existed. or Sega 32. I remember seeing it. it was... I saw the other one, the other big Sega handheld that had different little games. The game what Gear. Was... Yeah, the Game Gear. I had one of those. And that thing drained a motherfucking battery. Oh, dude. <laughs> I remember on a school field trip, I got, like, the battery, uh, it was, it was, one, two, three, four, it was a 14 pack, or no, no, it was a, thing, a 16 pack of batteries. And by the end of the trip, when I got back, all 16 batteries had been used and I hadn't been and the thing had been dead for like two three hours at that point it murdered battery packs dude murdered here's the thing I could be cool if it was uh, the rechargeable batteries you know you can recharge yeah. the batteries and then you know just keep swapping them out as they go yeah but nah dude nah. that was that that was an that epic was too fail. expensive although we did get the console for a steal. Mm. When it, they when were it, super expensive. They were a couple hundred bucks back then, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I like remember, two. and I remember when I got mine, it was, it was not. It was in a little uh, like regular cardboard box. Like yeah, that one over there, and it didn't have the original Game Gear box because my parents effectively got it from someone who was basically just selling it, mm. and it came with like four games. Dude, that's I, so I got sick. it late in its life cycle, but I still had fun with it. Oh yeah. I mean, who cares? What, was I really going to play Fahrenheit on the go? Yeah. The Nomad's pretty impressive, all things considered. I mean, say what you will about the battery life and screen quality, but it's a portable Sega Genesis from 1985. Ghostbusters on Sega crazy. Genesis. But what if One we of the a only good Ghostbusters with a games. lot less compromises? Well, say hello to the PS1 LCD monitor. A way to play oh, your yeah. favorite PlayStation games on JJ a portable has LCD one. screen. Oh, yeah. Connected. <clears throat> 
one more trip inside and we can play our PS1 <laughs> game portable. Through it. Released alongside the revised PlayStation model was a screen you'd attach with a couple of quarters. Plug in and BAM! It's honestly incredibly simple, and the screen and sound quality is excellent. I love how there's no extra wires, it just plugs in on the back, you plug in an AC adapter, and you're playing any PlayStation game you can think of on a mini screen. Now, of course, this isn't completely portable, you need to be plugged into an outlet at all times, but it makes bringing the system around places far easier. You can bring this to a hotel, a cottage, hell, you can get a car AC adapter and play this on the road. The screen yes. attachment business started really starting to start here. I mean, here's a third party one for the GameCube, same general idea, but not nearly as well made, simply because the GameCube wasn't designed to work with something like this, the PS1 was. So yes. we have this fun skin growth thing where we have to attach it here and attach this. I think I'm missing a piece. But I recall seeing all these yeah. screen cases for mm -hmm. your Xbox 360 or PlayStation I had, 3 or Xbox I, 1 or PlayStation 3. I, 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 I had something similar to that. It was, uh, but it, you couldn't put your console in it. Instead, it was like a little screen you could like pop up like that. Oh. It was interesting, but I only used it for a little bit. But one of these right here where you could just plug it in and, like, do that. Yeah. I'd wanted one of those for a while, but then eventually it just, like, it, I, my interest died out. I mean, get well, a gaming well, laptop at that point. At you know, that point. Now that's you can it, use Game case, Pass and shit TV on PC, so. so. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. This way your child doesn't have to go, God forbid, a minute talking to people <laughs> at grandma's. They can just bring their system with them, plug in somewhere, and keep the good times rolling. I mean, I'm guilty of this. Whenever traveling as a kid, I'd always pack up a portable DVD player in season three and four of Wings. I'd totally be set for not talking to anybody on a trip. God, these cases are overkill. I understand wanting to play your console games on the go, but this isn't that far off from just bringing a TV with you places. Sure, as a kid, I always had the desire to play my GameCube games on a road trip rather than my DS games. But come on, nobody wants to lug this around when this offers just as much entertainment. Yes! It's kind of cool to be able to play non-portable games portably, but when that involves carrying around a 50-pound sack, the magic has gone pretty quickly. Yeah. See, but these things aren't necessarily portable. They allow you to play your favorite consoles in the corner of your bedroom rather than on the living room TV. What about stuff more in line with the Turbo Express and the Sega Nomad? Well, those things have existence on the menu tonight. See, the technology required to make something along the lines of a Super Nintendo, yeah, more affordable and compact by the 2010s, definitely more than possible to take that and turn it into a super Hyper affordable super boy. Look how, talked about that. Look how boy, ugly that Hyper thing is, man. That thing looks like a, a Super Nintendo controller I think he's about steroids. to put it over, too. I think he's hop about this, but come on, man. Okay, let's turn it on. Jeez, I can't see the screen. The sun's too bright. So okay. the Superboy was released in 2011 and is basically the SNES version of the Sega Nomad. I love how it looks, it's just like a Super Nintendo controller. We pop in a cartridge and bam, we're playing Super Nintendo games on the go. Sometimes. It may be because I bought this used, but it's a bit finicky and doesn't work properly all the time. The D-pad feels a lot cheaper and more plasticky than the official Nintendo yeah, it's one. Loose. But Dude, I lose faith in Scott, and he just restores it. On the go. But if you really want to play Super Nintendo games on the go, I'm not really sure if you care all too much about authenticity. At this point, you might as well download these games on the 3DS or something. Mm -hmm. Similarly, we've got the Retro Duo Portable, also built to play SNES games. Uh, the design isn't nearly as charming. It looks like the most generic possible design for a video game controller with a screen. But it comes with an adapter to play NES games. Portably, yeah, portably. Jesus. Me, if you want to play Game Boy games portably, just attach the Super Game Boy to either one of these handhelds, and there you have it. The Retro Duo Portable actually had a fair amount of adapters made for it, so you can play games from all kinds of systems. Oh, yeah. I'd say if you wanted to play these console games on the go, this one is your best bet. But Hyperkin's still releasing new iterations of the Super Boy. This one was the original release. The later models use a widescreen display that stretches out the games. Why? What was the point of this? No Super Nintendo game for widescreen. I can't widescreen displays are more readily available than 4x3 displays right now, but why couldn't they have programmed these things to not stretch the games out to fill the screen? God, I am pissed at this thing I don't own. Well, if you just want a portable <laughs> NES, there's this guy right here, the mm -hmm. FC Mobile 2. Look at all this stuff it comes with. Controllers, a gun. The screen's the size of a grape. I mean, it works, but I think it's too small. Like, the screen is minuscule, and NES cartridge is twice the size of this device. I don't see any reason to try to make this as compact as possible so you can fit it in your pocket if in your other pocket you have to store NES carts in it. It sounds really rough and blown out. It just feels a bit too cheap for my liking. But if you really just have to play these games on the go, it works. Though it also smells weird, but I don't know if that's really a point to make talking about video games. So these modern retro console handhelds. They're neat, but I don't see them as anything more than a novelty. Like I Thank said, for people that just absolutely have to play video games via the original cartridges, the retro gaming purists, 
wouldn't they prefer playing these on a CRT with the best picture quality possible with the original controllers and unofficially made hardware and whatnot? Yes. It's so amazing to play these games via the original cartridges in the palm of your hands. I mean, that's just pretty neat. But many of these aren't the most well put together, like opening up the Superboy yeah. cartridge flap are... Are, are those wires supposed to be that visible? Jostling the systems a bit will cause <laughs> really. glitches or freeze the games. And plus, these cartridges are so big, I can't see anybody actively thinking, finally, I can play these games portably. These guards were not meant to be taken on the road, and these systems are nothing more than a neat little thing. But what if we take more modern systems and make portables out of them? To finally be able to play GameCube yeah, and Wii games outside? Oh my god. That's the dream! Well, let's talk about these portable consoles we can play outside but not play them because I don't have them. Fuck. Look at these! <laughs> portable homemade GameCubes and Wiis. These are literally dreams come true. Yes. Exactly but what I like wanted as a kid. $400. These are all fan made. Yeah. You need to have an extensive knowledge on how to turn this thing into this thing. I'm telling you, I would have killed for something like this. Sure, Mario 64 DS was great, but playing either of its successors, Sunshine or Galaxy, on the go? Oh. But alas, if you want a portable N64 or GameCube or Wii, you're gonna have to shell out the big bones or have a good idea of what the hell you're doing if you want to put one together. If you want to be more straightforward with this kind of stuff, obviously you could just wait until your favorite console games get remade or ported onto handheld systems. Donkey Kong Country Returns came to the 3DS, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 came to the PlayStation Vita. Uh, sure, these are downgraded in some ways, but literally all of these portable solutions are downgraded in some ways. Oh my yeah, the God. screen's smaller, the controls may be weird, it's always gonna be different. Of course, that begs the question, what about a console that, right out of the box, can be taken on the go with you? That's right. I'm talking the Wii U. You can plug your Wii U console into a power adapter and still connect to the gamepad if it's close enough. That means for Wii U games, you can play directly on the gamepad. Scott takes the piss out of himself yeah. because of, you know, he, he actually believed in the Wii U when it first came out, and he later realized, shit. Yeah. It just, like, eh, but... He still stands for I it a little I still bit. like the Wii U. I still I like think the I Wii U. Is a good, it's a good console, and it was just a a, a grow like a growing um, console for Nintendo that developed into the Switch. This is pre-Switch ideas, you know, being played with and and introduced. It wasn't like they just fucking flooded the market with Wii U's. No, but the problem with it was. Uh, their marketing was terrible with the Wii mm -hmm. U. Because the Wii U, when they first showed it, all they showed was this. Yeah. They thought, oh, this is just an attachment for the Wii. Whoopee. Versus, oh. No, it's no, an it's upgraded full, system. It's the yeah. literal, like, whole new system. And this is a whole new thing you can literally carry around the house with you and play wherever you want within, within the reach of your mm -hmm. console. Yeah. And that's an awesome concept. Yeah. But, you know, from this step... To the switch that's a hell of a progression hell of a progression at screen they're about as portable as the ps1 with the lcd monitor all you need to do is plug the wii u in and that's it it'll still stream video to the gamepad screen with no internet connection nothing i've seen dozens of people playing it at the airport or in the car maybe less than dozens but still it's possible maybe in less the than end dozens. home console gaming while incredible to be seen anywhere but the home it seems like it's a bit too tailor-made for the TV. Many games like this were made to be played sitting on a couch, connected to the internet at all times, and taking advantage of the horsepower you can achieve with a mm -hmm. fat box not having to take a screen and battery life into consideration. Maybe console gaming was just never meant to be played on the go. Heh. <laughs> Oh. Well, that's a look at console gaming on the go. See, a lot of these things are actually pretty cool, but they have a lot of roadblocks involved. Though I'm willing to look past a lot of them. With these portable home consoles, I never have to go indoors ever again! Ha! <laughs> I still believe that. Look what just happened. Can't rain indoors. The outside's amazing. That's right. Fuck you, house. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. He went cold-blooded on his house. Yeah, he did. Well, Be walls. glad it's not smart house. No. Oh, well... In terms of rain, it's like, hey, Scott, at least you don't have to worry about the rain on the outside fucking up the inside of your house. Oh, yeah, that happened when we were recording one time. Yeah, I... What? As who, a matter of fact, it was during a Scott the Waz video was we were it? talking about it. What the Scott? It was the canceled, it was the canceled one. Yes. And then all the... And then, uh... That was also a weird one, too, because in that one, he talked about Metroid Dread, and Metroid Dread was announced, and it was announced. at the last E3. Damn, this is awesome. Timing with Scott, man. The timing. <laughs> it's great. I yeah. love it. So, yeah, this was Console Gaming on the Go by Scott the Waz. If you want to see more from the Waz man himself, Mr. Wozniak, feel free to click his name in the title of the video. 
And do you, it. Yeah, exactly. If you want to see more from us, you know what to do. You hit that subscribe button, you ring that bell, you leave a like on the video. And I guess until next time, everyone, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Chad. We'll see you then, everyone. Peace out.